Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome to my channel. So today I have a Canada Goose review for you guys where I'll be reviewing three different parkas. I have the Shelbourne, the Ross Claire, and the Trillium. And before I made those big purchases, I couldn't find a really in-depth review online that really showed me them, walked me through them, or told me whether or not they felt like it was worth the money. So I figured I would do that here today. I'll show you guys all three of the parkas, quickly review them, compare them a little bit, and then go through the pros and the cons. So the first Canada Goose I have here is the Ross Claire Parka. I have this in a size small, and I believe this color is Adirondack Green. But don't quote me. But I actually really love this Canada Goose and it's one of my favorite longer Canada Goose styles. I feel like it's very figure flattering because it has this asymmetric shape here that kind of cinches you in the waist and then flares out right above your knee. It's longer in the back than it is in the front and I also really like that detail about it. Sometimes Canada Goose coats can look a little shapeless but this one is very sleek and tailored to your body. And on top of that, it's supposed to be good to up to I think like negative four degrees Fahrenheit. So this is very, very warm. As far as details go, this coat has a ton of them. It has this felt portion here, which in my head is so that when you zip it up, it'll protect your face and keep your face a little bit more warm. It has a ton of pockets. So it has these two here in the front that you kind of slide your hand in. And then it also has a zippered one here on the side as well as a mesh one as well so you can put more things you want to keep protected on the inside of your coat as opposed to having them outside of your coat it zips down the back and you can unzip this to give yourself a little more space and a little more air and then there also is a big drawstring around here to kind of cinch you in as well as a hook that sits on the hood here the fur on this is of course detachable and I can use this little piece of extra fabric they gave me to cover up the zipper if I want to detach the fur. This parka also has toggle details up here near the fur and then some really big nice button details which really stand out. They're extremely large in comparison to the other coats I have. And I'm not sure if this is color specific or specific to this coat but it seems that the Canada Goose emblem that they put on all of their coats is a little bit smaller than the rest on the Ross Claire parka. I think I've seen this on a couple of other parkas as well and I'm not sure if it's a color thing or if it's a style thing but this one is noticeably smaller than the other ones that I have. One thing I do have to say about this coat is I notice a lot more fading around the more worn areas and I'm not sure if that's because of the color I chose or because of the style of coat. I've looked on a few different forums and it seems people who have this coat have noticed the same thing. I think it may just be the material on the outside, but it seems like where my sleeves are here is a little bit more worn as well as around the corners of my pockets, around the rim as well. And then also down this seam here in the back, the color fades a little bit more around those areas. And again, I'm not sure whether it's the color or the style. The next parka I have is the Shelbourne parka and this is also in a size four. I got this in the color navy and this is also a longer fitted silhouette. Both the Shelbourne and the Ross Claire I believe are good to be to negative four degrees so this should keep me just as warm but this one is a little bit longer than my Ross Claire so I do get a little bit more warmth out of it because less of my legs are out. One noticeable difference between the two is this one has a quilted pattern whereas my Ross Claire is just a very solid straight up and down. This one has more of a puffer jacket type of effect to it, a lot more like bubbles and ripples in it which I actually really like. This coat also has the toggles near the fur, the hook on the back of the hood, the two outside pockets, one on each side. And then it also has a zippered pocket here in the inside. There is no mesh pocket on this one, but that's okay. The pockets are a really good size and I still feel like I can hold a really good amount. Instead of zipping up the back, this coat does have snaps. So if I wanted to, I can pull these snaps apart and kind of show the back of my pants and then get a little bit more air in that way, which I actually do like to do sometimes because I do worry that when I sit down on a surface, if it's dirty or something like that, I kind of worry about sitting on it. So it's nice that I can just pull the snaps up and pull this up and then I'll have like a nice flap that's clear and I can just sit my regular jeans on it instead of putting the bottom of my expensive jacket. Next I have the Trillium Parka and I got this one in a size small in the color black and this is one of the largest fits in my opinion. It fits a little bit oversized and a lot less tailored. It kind of more is just like a blanket kind of rectangular shape to it. But this one is the one that's rated for the coldest temperatures. I think this one is supposed to be good to like negative 15 or something like that. So this one is for more colder temperatures and I reach for it when I'm in those really, really chilly days, like a blizzard type of weather. This is the Canada Goose I would grab. 
Like the other ones, this one also has front pockets, but instead of just two, this one has four. I have two lower ones down here and then two higher up closer to the chest area. And the pockets on this are way bigger than my other Canada's coats. I can fit a really good amount. If you guys can see there, there's really big rectangular pockets here with the two that are up here as well. Another thing to note is that the sleeves on this one are a lot longer than the sleeves on my other jackets. The knitted portion, I mean, is like twice the size. So that knitted portion goes maybe like halfway to my hand here and I notice that I'll keep my hands a lot more warm if I go for this coat versus the other two. This one also lets you cinch your waist but it definitely has a much thicker belt than the other two choices. As you guys can see here the belt portion on this where you really would cinch it in is a lot thicker. It also doesn't appear on the sides or in the front. That feature really kind of stops in the back. There are no buttons or any zips back here so this kind of just has a really simple plain back. So there are some similarities between all of the coats they all have little zipper covers so none of your zippers are revealed they all have underwire in the hood so you can kind of shape the fur to fit around the shape of your face they all have detachable fur as well so if you're not in the mood to have your fur on or it's not that cold you can just take it off so sometimes when it's like late november but there's no snow on the ground and it's really not too too cold i'll just take the fur off and it'll look like i have on a really nice fall jacket as opposed to looking like i have on a winter coat in october all three of them also have really large hoods so it'll block the wind in your face sometimes if it's really cold and it's like that chilly like wind breeze i'll just put the hood over and it'll protect my face from that really cold wind they also all have backpack straps in the inside so you can take the coat off and just put it on your shoulders if you're somewhere and you really don't want to wear it and they also all have fur lined pockets to keep your hands a little bit more warm if you want to put them inside of your jacket. Here's a quick look at all three coats side by side to give you a visual of how they compare lengthwise and style wise. I'm 5'9 for reference and this is how they fit on my frame. Here you can see that the Shelbourne and Ross Claire's are more of a slim fit and the Trillium is a little bit of a larger fit. And you can also see that the Shelbourne is definitely the longest. I wore a thicker layer underneath and I can still zip them closed comfortably. They still fit very well and I'm still really comfortable and cozy. I'm not too stuffed in when I wear them. With all that being said, if I had to rank them in order of my most favorites, I would rank them as Ross Claire, um, Shelbourne, and then the Trillium. I love them all, of course. Um, that's why I got them. I actually do love them all and I reach for them at different points. I feel like they all serve a really good purpose and I'm really glad that I bought all three. So now let's get into some pros and some cons of the Canada Goose Parka. The first pro is that they are extremely warm. I think that can be a con if you get overheated really easily, but to me, that's perfect. I don't really need to wear anything too big underneath. I can wear a thinner layer and still be decently warm. I personally still like to wear something a little bit thicker. That's just me and I'm never too hot, but I know I can always count on the area covered by the jacket to be very, very warm. The next pro for me is that I think they're very stylish. I think all of them are super cute, very stylish, and I love how they look with simple outfits dressing anything up, I can always count on throwing on my Canada Goose and it elevating the look I have going on. So another pro for me is going to be longevity. So I think the longest one I've had for about five or six years now and I wear a ton. It's really cold where I come from and I wear my coat a lot. I have to stay warm of course so I get a really good amount of wear out of it and it didn't show that many signs of wear. So my next pro of the Canada Goose Parkas is going to be the warranty program. Each coat comes with this authenticity tag in the inside and if you don't cut that out and you buy from a authorized reseller you can take advantage of the warranty program. So I've actually used that warranty program a couple of times and I was able to replace my coat the last time. They just gave me a brand new one worth the same value as the coat that I originally purchased which was amazing. They also have a program where you can send it in to get it cleaned, which is also really nice. So the first time I used the warranty program, a button on the back of my coat actually popped off and they were able to fix that and then send it back to me. And then a couple of years later, actually the fur on my one of my coats started to get really flat and the back of my coat didn't have any puffiness. It just really looked like a really plain kind of like 
girl on parka that I could find at like H&M thickness wise like it was really really flat and I sent it into them and they told me that over time the down just kind of loses its fluffiness and I needed to get it replaced and they were able to do that for me as well and they replaced my jacket at the same price as I originally paid for it so I was able to get one for equal value which was amazing so if you don't cut the tag out and you buy from an authorized reseller you should be able to take advantage of that they have a list on their website of people that are authorized to sell their coats so definitely check there if you're concerned so my next pro is going to be the fur quality I really feel like the fur on these jackets is just so gorgeous it just blows in the wind if you blow on it it moves it's not stiff it just has so much body and movement in it and it just is so pretty the colors are gorgeous especially this white color here they have like a darker brown or like a lighter tan I guess it really depends on where they source the fur from but if you're able to get a really good color that you love I'm sure the fur is going to be amazing it just moves so well it's never ever ever stiff you can always tell it's a Canada goose before you see the sign if you just look at the fur because the fur it just looks so pretty the next pro is going to be the shoulder straps in the back of the jackets I think these shoulder straps are really handy if you want to take your jacket off if you're someone that gets overheated and you're out and about and you don't want to put your coat down or in the car but you also don't want to wear it it's really nice to be able to just put these on and make like a little backpack it doesn't always look the coolest but it is very handy when you need to be hands-free but you also don't want to have your jacket on so let's get into the cons i think the first con would have to be obviously the price they're all very expensive they all retail for over 990 dollars so at least $1,000 is the price point, and I think that's a lot for a jacket. I do feel like the cost per wear is definitely there. I know I wear one of these jackets at least every day, so the cost per wear is definitely there, but it is a hefty price tag to begin with. I think there is a very unfortunate environmental aspect that comes with wearing these jackets that you have to grapple with if you're going to make that purchase. My next con would be saturation. There are a ton of Canada's Goose coats out there and you'll see them everywhere you go. So that is one con. It's not something that's terribly unique or that really would be something you wouldn't see everywhere. You'll definitely see them everywhere you turn. So if you're not into that kind of thing, that definitely is a major con. Okay, so the next con is actually one of the biggest for me and that is that you cannot take it everywhere to be cleaned. Um, my advice to anyone who's watching this review and hopes of purchasing one or looking to purchase one I would avoid light colors I've been there I've done that and it was a nightmare so avoid light colors and just go for something darker um, these coats show a lot of dirt if you choose something lighter and they're very hard to get cleaned you can't put them in your own washer and you can't just take them to the regular cleaner you have to take them to someone who specializes in cleaning a specific type of down jacket the fur is a risk in itself. When I did take it to the cleaners, I just zipped the fur off, but there's goose feathers inside of the jacket and when they get wet, they bleed. So the color will start to show on the outside of your jacket if you buy especially a lighter one. This can also happen in some of the darker colors, but it's very rare that you're gonna see this in like black or something like that because it just wouldn't show. But you have to make sure you get it cleaned by either Canada Goose themselves who will clean it for a small fee or someone who is specialized in cleaning a down jacket because you'll have a nightmare on your hands. I had a light beige one, like it was a beige color and I took it to a cleaner to get it cleaned and there was little like goose feather outlines on it. And it took me a little while to get it out. I was able to eventually get it out but it was because my damage wasn't terribly bad. Um, I still could see a little trace outline, but it was still wearable and no one really ever noticed. But that is something to definitely be cautious about. And finally, my last con would have to be wear depending on the style. So I haven't noticed as much wear with my Shelbourne or my Trillium parka, but there is a little bit of wear, like I mentioned earlier, with my Ross Claire parka, especially along the most seen or used areas. So around my pockets or around the zipper on the butt, around my sleeves there just is a lot more wear so read some reviews and just check out the style you're wearing and make sure the material that it's made out of can withhold every day wear and tear well guys that is all i have for today's review um i hope it was helpful and i hope it helped you narrow down which style of jacket you wanted or if you wanted to invest in this brand overall be sure to drop a comment and let me know your thoughts Definitely don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful or if you enjoyed it. 
don't forget to subscribe and stop back by next week i drop a video once a week and i would hate for you to miss something new